Welcome back to Small Caps, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Kerry Stevenson. Today, I have asked Daryl Davies. He's the CEO of Inhaler, uh, Inhale RX. It's a mouthful. But Inhale RX are a medical device company, and they're doing inhalation devices. It's a really interesting area that they're focused in. The ASX code is IRX. Sit up and take some notice because here is Daryl Davies. Daryl, great to see you. Thanks for joining me on Small Caps. Thank you for having me, Kerry. I'm I'm excited to be here and uh, looking forward to letting you and your listeners know about what we're up to. Well, I'm excited you're here because really you guys haven't been speaking about what you're doing because you've been getting all your ducks in a row and it's an interesting area, the inhalation market, um, for both pain management uh, and also mental health. So before we get into the real nitty-gritty, if you like, give us an overview of who the company is. Sure, I'll give a bit of a background there. So essentially Inhale RX uh, is evolved from a company called LifeSpot Health. And LifeSpot Health previously were selling medical devices. They had a different ticker. Uh, back in 2020, there was a recognition from the board that a new strategic direction was needed. And that's where the, the pivot and the rebrand happened to Inhale RX. Essentially, the overarching goal for Inhale RX is to address unmet medical needs via inhalation therapies. So we're developing novel inhalation therapies to help address medical conditions where treatments are otherwise not readily available or available at all. Yeah, uh, You said just a moment ago a new strategic direction from where you were before. What's changed? Is is it more um, you saw the opportunity in the inhalation space? Yes, that was certainly one of the, the significant things there, Kerry. I think there was also a focus on the clinical programs and the drug development pipeline that is required to bring these drugs to market and, and have these drugs approved uh, with the, the Food and Drug Administration, the FDA. So it was it was really bringing online our clinical programs, which I'll talk to, and, and the and the I guess the stage of those programs where we are right now shortly. But but that was the main direction we were moving away from uh, simply you know making medical devices available uh, to to Australians to to actually you know bringing it back to a, a proper drug development pipeline whereby we're creating these novel drugs and we're bringing them through a robust regulatory framework to have drugs made available and ultimately approved with the FDA. Uh, you mentioned FDA. I want to get into the drugs in a minute, but you, you've mentioned FDA a couple of times. We've got the TG because you're an ASX listed company, ASX yep, IRX. Correct. It's yep. the TGA in Australia, but you mentioned FDA. Are, are you just, it's the same, one and the same? Um, sort of, there are a couple of differences. So the, the TGA are the, the governing body in Australia. They look after Australia. The FDA is the grandfather, if you like, uh, and, and they actually look after America. It's a much, much bigger market. So what we're doing is running clinical programs in Australia, but the data is being used to achieve a, a drug approval with the FDA, where there's a, a bigger a drug uh, total addressable market. And, and there's a few advantages to that. But essentially, if you have a drug approved with the FDA, it, it, it almost then can make its way through to being an approved drug in, in Australia, but the TGA a lot more uh, streamlined than, than if we were just focusing on the TGA. So we're, we're truly developing drugs on a global scale, and it's not just limited to Australia, hence why we have decided to pursue a registration and a drug approval with the, the largest regulatory body in the world, which is the FDA. That makes sense now. Okay, got it. So the drugs we'll get into in a minute, but with are these drugs that you're doing, are they currently in use in patients via another way of of getting to patients? In other words, inject injectables or something else? And is it just a change of the 
of the delivery of the drugs? Well, the delivery mechanism is an important aspect for us. Uh, so there's a, a few benefits. They have like a, a peak um, onset and offset, which means that if you have, say, breakthrough pain, if you're somebody that wakes up in the morning and you have, you know, just really bad pain immediately, sometimes the, the more commonly used medications for chronic conditions take a little bit longer to kick in and, and have effect. Yep. So you have a, this rapid onset, which enables patients to, you know, take the edge off immediately. Um, and, and the same can be said for anxiety. If you're feeling particularly anxious and you feel like you may be having an episode of anxiety, with the, the drugs that we're developing, you have something available to immediately take the edge off. So it, they're specifically designed to address these acute episodes that are happening. And traditional drug development pathways don't really focus on that. So inhalation is, is critical as part of that. There's also a higher bioavailability, which basically means that more of the drug is getting into your system as, when it's delivered via inhalation. And the other sort of benefits, it's very easy to use for patients and uh, doctors can, you know, prescribe these drugs uh, a lot more freely. One of the, just to answer the second part of your question, one of the initiatives that uh, Inhale RX has been on in the last 18 months, we have been quite quiet, uh, as you quite rightly recognize, we have been flying under the radar, but we have made different drug device uh, combination products made available to over 10,000 patients in Australia. And wow. that's the medical cannabis pathway. So we have experimented with different de drug delivery mechanisms. We have a lot of data on the, uh, I guess, the, the efficacy as well as the um, ease of use. And also we understand from doctors what gap this is filling in the market. So you know, those insights were really valuable for us as we started to create our clinical programs and, and, and really design the clinical trials that we're running in Australia. Talk to us about the clinical trials because they're pretty important as you develop these sorts of drugs and, and, and ways of delivering them. Sure. So the first one I will talk about is for complex regional pain syndrome, otherwise known as CRPS. We're developing a drug called IRX211, and that is delivered via uh, an inhaler. Now, most people can uh, relate to people that suffer with asthma and a, a Ventolin product. It, yep. It's really exactly the same delivery mechanism. It, it's an inhaler with a canister that it can be um, delivered at, in, in times of need. So we have, in terms of the clinical trials, we have that one, that program split into two. We have a phase one of which we already have ethics approval that was announced to the market last week. Uh, so we're expecting to recruit for that in May, 2023. We also have a phase two, which is designed uh, for participants that actually suffer with this condition and that that's investigating some of the the safety and efficacy um components of of the the trial itself so the phase one is identifying the the adequate dosage and and looking at some of the um i guess more technical scientific aspects the pk and and other things and then we roll straight into the phase two immediately after so that one split into two Okay, a question that's come up in my head is when you get prescribed a drug, yep. let's say it's a tablet or it's, you know, you go to the doctors and you get an injection, um, yep. I guess there's a way of controlling it. But if I've got an inhaler, because, by the way, I've used um, an asthma inhaler in the past, um, had a child and my asthma disappeared, it was really odd, um, so I don't All need right. it. Yeah, it's really weird. Okay. But... There were times when I probably took too much of, mm. of my inhaler. So how do you control that? Well, I guess with any drug, Kerry, I guess there's uh, it could be open to the, the chances of taking too much of anything. This is yeah, where we rely on physicians to 
actually prescribe a certain dose that is uh, administered. However, it is worth noting that these uh, devices do have a counter on them. They do deliver an exact amount of the drug. So it is a Uh measured dose. And it will be up to the the doctor, the physician, to uh, evaluate the needs of the patient and uh, determine how many of the actuations a patient should have in any circumstance. But, you know, there's a little bit of discovery work that goes into uh, the clinical programs, which will help determine some of the recommendations for patients long term. Daryl, are you guys the only people in the month like I, I just want to kind of find out from from our community who looks at opportunities and goes oh this looks interesting how many yeah. others are doing what you're doing what makes you guys unique yeah so i guess from the inhalation standpoint it's quite unique the okay. the second program which i didn't talk to kerry i'll just touch on quickly that's uh, for panic disorder so there's, there's essentially three different types of anxiety and uh, panic disorder is one of them. That's a nominated indication that we're targeting. And that is the second clinical program that we are developing. So that one goes straight into a phase two and we already have made significant uh Uh, I I guess milestones, we've already achieved quite a lot with that program to set it up and get everything ready for this execution phase. Can I just ask you, uh, you said phase two, did you do a phase one and you're now into phase two or? or... No, so uh, part of the the benefits of our chosen regulatory pathway, which is called a 505B2. Um, now, this, this pathway enables us to leverage existing data that has been made available in the market. So we can actually use some of the data, some of the previous data that has uh, been unearthed through other trials, and we can include that as part of our uh, process. So this is one of the many ways in which we've been able to save a lot of time and save a lot of money in, in this process, because the, the normal drug development timeline is about 10 years. It exceeds 10 years wow. uh, for each program. And, and we've been able to sort of condense that to something closer to three to five years as a result of this nominated regulatory pathway, which is called 505B2. So I think to circle back on your previous question around what makes us unique mm. and uh, you know, what does our competition look like in this space, if you like? Both of the clinical programs that I've mentioned are uh, developing inhalation drugs that are derived from cannabinoids. Uh, there is not an inhalation uh, drug device combination that has been approved by the FDA. Uh, so, you know, we're, we're sort of first to market in developing some of these assets. Uh, which makes us unique. There has been other companies globally that have acknowledged the opportunity in in developing uh, drug device combinations using um, cannabinoids and and other substances. And and look, they're at varying different stages of their drug development uh, uh, pipeline. But yeah, it's quite a unique space to focus on the 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 acute episodes as i mentioned before with breakthrough pain and the onset of panic with panic disorder so that's the main areas that you're focused on the breakthrough pain and the panic disorder and it's fascinating because i just think what is that is that even a big enough market the panic disorder market yeah well the panic disorder itself is actually a, a a pretty big market um it affects approximately three to five percent of the general population, uh, but you know, data is a little bit skewed because it's it's commonly um, you know misdiagnosed or, or as as with any medical condition, it is quite hard uh, to to be entirely accurate on that. But about three to five percent of the general population, and uh, and I'm sure those uh, numbers are are, are growing um, quite considerably off the back of these. Uh, global events um, like, you know, COVID-19, pandemic, there's unfortunately, that's had a knock-on effect with people's mental health globally. 
Yeah, a hundred percent. All right, let's go more corporate if we could, Daryl. Um, how many shares on issue? How much money have you got in the bank? And how are you spending that as we go into 23? I want to get a, a picture, I guess, for our community of the way forward from here. Yeah. So there's a, a I think there's 187,000 shares on issue. Um, okay. I need to get that number exactly, but, but that should be the ballpark. The amount of money that we currently have in the bank is about 1.3 million. Mm -hmm. uh, we do anticipate needing to uh, do a further capital raise in the near future, especially to help fund our phase two for panic disorder and uh, the phase two for CRPS. Phase one CRPS is already fully funded. Uh, we 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 have everything sort of already mapped out with that. And as I mentioned before, we've already hit the milestone of getting an ethics approval in place. Um, but the other two programs will require a, a little bit more funding as the year goes out. I guess in parallel to that, we're running uh, an investigational new drug uh, strategy, which involves uh, a, a bit of regulatory work to open up uh, what is called an IND with the FDA, we've already incurred the vast majority of expenses in, in preparation for that. But this really helps position the company. I know we're talking about the corporate side, but this really helps position the company very well uh, to appeal to either Big Pharma or Big Tobacco. Because if we can get positive results from the phase 2A uh, trials, and we can demonstrate that we've opened up an IND across both programs, that makes it a very attractive target uh, for, for other companies that are looking to take it through the final leg, which is phase three, and then through to commercialization. So is that when Big Pharma, because like did Big Pharma start to look at you at this stage? I, I, what I'm looking for now is, I guess, what are the key milestones which are going to deliver value to shareholders? Yeah, so the milestones will be um, first patient in. Uh, so, so actually getting patients in the door, getting them uh, dosed across the phase, phase one, that's a significant milestone. Getting the ethics approval for both of our phase two programs is going to be a significant milestone. Um, equally, when we start bringing in patients and screening them for, for those two programs, that will be a milestone. Opening up the two IND programs, as I mentioned, that is a very significant milestone, actually, uh, could, uh, with, with other biotechs in this space. Um, and, and I guess investors that are familiar with, with this, this area will understand that that usually is a, a pretty significant inflection point uh, for, for these companies as they as they move forward. So, yeah, I, I'd say they're the more significant uh, milestones that are coming up in the, in the near future. Can we have a timeline on those at all? Yeah, so phase one 2023 is when we anticipate to have first patient in for the, the phase one program. The phase two program for panic disorder, uh, we will be looking to close out a, a capital raise before um, you know, initiating the, the execution of that program. But we anticipate that to have first patient in around Q3 of this year. And then uh, CRPS phase two uh, will likely go on to, to uh, towards the end of the year, essentially. Uh, that, that will be uh, Q4 before we're looking at first patient screened. So it's a pretty busy 2023 for Inhale RX. If I if I look at what yeah. been... well, well, certainly, you know, com from a milestone perspective, it's incredibly busy. And and I think in 2022, it was all about the planning phase. It was about information acquisition. It was about planning our regulatory uh, side particularly well. And I think, you know, if you're going to chop down a tree, you may as well spend the time sharpening your axe first. And, and I think that sort of, you know, basically explains what 2022 was for us. And 2023 is where we're coming into the execution phase. So um, with that in mind, um, we're very excited for what's happening next. And uh, I'm very much looking forward to uh, delivering on these clinical programs. 
Daryl, before I wrap it up and ask you for three reasons why people should be sitting up and taking notes, I want to know why Daryl Davies got excited and decided I want to I want to lead this company forward. Yeah, uh, so I guess a couple of different reasons. Um, I truly believe that where the company is at the moment in bringing inhalation medications, and this isn't going to be limited to just cannabinoids. The, the company has a lot of plans to bring other uh, inhalation therapies to market. So I saw it as it's an opportunity to be best in class in, a, in, a, in an area where there's not um, too many people focused. So, you know, th there's that side. Um, I've, I've had loved ones in my family, I guess, on a personal level that have suffered with panic disorder uh, as a particular indication. So, I mean, I, I've got a bit of a personal story in there as well, but I think overall it's just the passion and the ability to change people's lives and, and be a part of that process of bringing medications to market to serve unmet medical needs. Well, you're certainly coming a long way um, and it has flown a little bit under the radar, which is great to have you on Small Caps to alert our community to what you're doing. And you must come back as you develop into 2023 because it sounds like there's going to be a lot of news flow coming out yeah. of 2023. Um, it'll be right. interesting to see Big Pharma uh, starting to take notice as well. So let's wrap it up if we could, Daryl. Sure, Give us sure. three reasons why people should be sitting up and taking notice of Inhale RX right now. Okay, okay. So probably reason number one is what I've really just covered. We're moving into the execution phase across these clinical programs. So, you know, we've had a very quiet time. We've flown under the radar. Now it's been a, a case of, of bringing these uh, clinical programs to life. And we're starting to see that with the, the ethics approval already come in for the phase one and everything being very well mapped out with the contract research organization being assigned uh, for both of the phase two programs. So, so that's probably one um, and arguably the main reason to be excited, just where we're at in terms of the, the life cycle of the drug development pipeline. It's a particularly yeah. exciting time to get in now. The second point, I will probably say what we're focusing on, as in we're addressing unmet medical needs in with a large total addressable market. The, the commercial um, value of being able to develop these drugs and, and get them approved successfully with the FDA is very significant. And I think shareholders should, or potential shareholders should be paying attention to that opportunity. Yeah. The third point I would maybe say, look, if you look at our current capital structure, uh, we have some uh, institutional investors from uh, around the world uh, that recognize the potential of where we're currently at. Um, that includes the UK, Canada, and we've got companies in Australia as well um, that have been long-term holders and, and will continue to be so, uh, knowing that this is um, a, a really good time to develop these programs to a point where we can start to appeal more so to what we were touching on before with uh, big pharma and big tobacco, uh, because big tobacco have demonstrated that they like cannabinoid inhalation um, drug device combination products that are being developed. And, and we've seen all sorts of acquisitions happening. And uh, and I guess the, the big pharma piece, as I mentioned before, where you've got the, the positive phase two results coupled with the IND side, it, it makes it irresistible. Well, I think it's a, it's a very interesting time. I'm I'm fascinated by this whole inhalation device mechanism. It seems to me that technology is helping to improve people's lives and this yeah. is a much less invasive way. And as you said earlier on, which was interesting, yeah, the delivery of, of the drug is so much more effective by inhalation rather than by tablet form or any other sort of form. So... It's a very interesting time. We, I really found it fascinating what you're doing. So we look forward to the news flow as it continues throughout 2023. But for now, Daryl Davies, thanks for joining me on Small Caps. Thank you, Kerry. Appreciate it.